Tuesday, bandits attacked security officers, GSU, who were on a routine patrol in Kapindasum. For more than five hours, security officers, including reinforcement from the Rapid Deployment Unit, RDU, and police reservists engaged the armed criminals who had surrounded Kapindasum Primary School and the neighboring GSU camp in a gun battle. <laughs> The learners and their teachers who were in panic were forced to scamper for safety and lie on the floors of their classes while some fled to the dormitory. The National Assembly's Departmental Committee on Administration and Security on Wednesday visited the volatile area to assess the situation after Tuesday's attack. Area leaders also lashed out at security personnel for sending wrong signals during the daring attack by bandits. They, when somebody from the headquarters of police was giving a signal that everything is okay, he said everything is cool, Naomba Kwamba. Tabadali kama huko Nairobi usipuate signal kuna network ya kupata tabadali ni tuwe na heshima na tunataka kusema it is something that must be investigated na kama kuna watu waliuzika uh, regardless who they are we don't have secret cows they must be brought to books at the same time the leaders raised concerns over a blue chopper which has been spotted landing in the hills where the bandits hide Na hiyo chopa ai huwa inashukanga ni kawaida yake. Na tumesema tumeambia serikali kwamba puata mwenye chopa I am calling for zara investigations. We want to know hii ndege blue na hii ndege white ni anani. The government has deployed the Kenya Defence Forces officers to Kapindasum to flush out bandits who have been terrorizing residents. The KDF officers will supplement efforts by police officers and the National Police Reservist to tame insecurity in the area that has seen tens of people killed and hundreds more displaced. Atujafanya operation. Sasa mpaka bandits wanatufanyia operation. Na sisi tulika set ili operation ifanyike. But we are still having leaders who are not ready to settle this matter of banditry. It has become a problem. Adequate security measures have also been put in place to avoid any disruption ahead of the national examination set to begin next week. Meanwhile, the Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers, Kupert, has called on the government to offer paramilitary training for teachers working in insecurity pockets around the country. These new demands were raised during the Kupert annual general meeting in Isiolo. We are requesting the government uh, to facilitate teachers by giving them guns so that they can be able to protect themselves um, in line of their duty. So we are also telling the Peter Service Commission that uh, they must consider allowing first but teachers run for safety. The latest incident comes barely two weeks after armed criminals shot dead a police reservist near Kapindasun Primary School. The institution reopened this year after being closed since 2019 due to persistent attacks. Rosongwe, MTV. All right, so that report by Rosongwe just captured a small area of uh, uh, the education sector. And of course, as the national examinations beckon, uh, the issue of security is a really a huge concern as well. I'll begin with you, Margaret. What are your thoughts on really what is happening? Because security is a big concern. We've seen what happened with the teachers who were interdicted by TSC as well due to insecurity in the northern, uh, northeastern part of the country. And now you have this other part of the country that is experiencing banditry, still security concerns. Some of them is now saying, look, give us guns as teachers, take us through paramilitary training. We need to be able to be equipped if you want us to, to teach, if you want us to be able to help in terms of the education system. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? It's very sad, very, very sad. In fact, I'm not very happy with the TSC. They would rather that the teachers should die. Why would they interdict them? Because you see, a teacher needs a conducive environment to teach. And it's the government to ensure that the teacher is safe. Yeah, it's so wrong for the teacher to worry. A teacher is worrying about uh, their safety. They can't teach well, meaning the child will not be taught well. And I want to believe if these bandits also knew that the teachers can also uh, use a gun, then they would respect each other. I support that teachers should be trained. Let them know how to use a gun. They don't know how to protect themselves. Isn't but that a little bit too radical? No. It, you see, <laughs> if the government is not willing to protect the teacher, then what happens? 
if I stand up here and try to harm you, no, you won't just sit there as I am. If I knew that you can resist, then I would really prepare to come and harm you. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I'm saying the teachers should be trained is because they also have to feel safe. If they, you see, if I don't go to work, TSC is going to interdict me or sack me. So I, uh, maybe my suggestion also would be that they let the government take charge and ensure that teachers are safe. If we can give uh, police officers to go to hide, then that means we have enough of them to also take care of the teachers, <laughs> yeah. surely. Let the teachers feel safe and they'll do their work well. Mm -hmm. Peter? Yeah, okay. Security becomes everything. You know, security is everything. Um, <coughs> And uh, defense is also everything. That's why we are seeing uh, the war in uh, the Palestine and Israel. It's all about security and defense. Uh, the issue that we have in our school, in, especially in the banditry areas, the issue in the northern Kenya, I said it on this show sometime recently, mm -hmm. also starts with the leadership of this country. Um, I have heard the security minister, the minister in charge, uh, Mr. Kindiki, I've had him warn many times, use that language of, you know, the language that we, we are used to from politicians, the whole language of no stone will remain and, and no, we'll do everything possible in the book. But at the end of the day, it's just hot air, as somebody called it in the, in the, in the Supreme Court. So we keep these repeated stories of bandits, we think they are going down, but they're still going on, are very discouraging. As a government, as a people in this nation, we need to come up with measures, proper measures, to safeguard. We can't talk about even exams properly, exam uh, properly being done without the security of the learners mm -hmm. and of the teachers and those ones who are managing the exams. Mm -hmm. So there's a problem, and that problem must be solved. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Amos, uh, I mean, even the impact <coughs> this whole situation, the security situation really has on the education of the learners within those specific areas, you know, what, what impact does that have? I want to begin by appealing to the conscience of the politicians and the leaders from these, these, these areas. To look at all statistics and indica indicators of development of the areas where they are finding this kind of nonsense that we are calling banditry. And I want to tell them straight to their face. You are not punishing Professor Kindi Kikituri. You are not punishing William Ruto and you are not punishing Nancy Masharia. You are wasting the lives of innocent people exactly. in that region. It is very bad that your children are sitting somewhere very comfortable in Karen, Runda, Muthaiga, and even some of you don't live in such affluent places as such. So you just try to pretend that you've made it, but you barely have made it. Mm. Stop this kind of nonsense and this kind of madness and allow the children of the poor to at least have an opportunity through mm -hmm. exams. Mm -hmm. What you are trying to do is to let these children continue living in abject poverty in the name of imagining that you are punishing Nanzi Masharia. The work of Nanzi Masharia is not about to provide security and this is not the way we should be thinking about the role of the Teacher Service Commission. There's nothing radical around giving teachers guns. I totally support that teachers should be taken through paramilitary training and should be given guns because yeah. nothing stops any ordinary Kenyan from owning a gun. You can ap apply to get a gun and you are mm -hmm. given because your life is threatened if you provide sufficient reasons. And I think that teachers have demonstrated that there are enough reasons why they, they need to be armed. Yes. So the, the, the Kupet, Kewata, <laughs> KNUT are very much in order to demand, not even just to appeal, to demand mm -hmm. that teachers should be armed in these areas. And Professor Kindiki Kithure give teachers guns so that if these bandits imagine that they are very strong, Teachers also come out to defend themselves so that they do not have to think that they have the monopoly of violence. Government has its role to play, but the role of government is not to be fighting bandits alone. Government has enough issues to deal with. I was watching what Honorable Moses Kuria was um, putting across yesterday, and I found a very, very transformative speech around refocusing the public service. That's what we need to do. The business of government is not walking around in the name of lazy people who refuse to go to school, those who believe that they should be stealing other people's cows so that they are dealing with them. 
please let's say professor kidure kindiki is a good law professor could really be advancing issues of national interest of critical importance and all this business of just allowing a few politicians to play around with the with the lives of our children okay. this one should not be allowed and please we are getting into an examination period you're just wasting the lives of these children but our children who are in those regions don't worry it doesn't matter how the beginning is soldier on exam is a normal process you'll go through them and you still be successful and when you are successful please don't go back and behave like the politicians from your region who have let your people down mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh and i want to say you know i mean I, I asked if it's radical because i i would imagine you know it would take a, a long period of time where you have to sort of train teachers first of all to be able to handle a firearm to be able to defend themselves if ever that situation but, but arises, these bandits right? are trained even within a day within within two weeks and, and what would that mean for really a, the larger security situation That's where it. you have two armed uh, you know parties where you have now the bandits and those who are defending I themselves sort of engaging in in a situation that would be quite Kim bloody Kim I believe. Kimayo gave us a good answer he told us that it's better to have many good people People with the guns rather than <laughs> many bad people with the guns. No, 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 there is a problem also with so many guns. I think that's why <laughs> there's something told said about mopping out all guns. You right. know, mm. even this but bandits, they don't they, these bandits need to be disarmed. You know, the issue is not actually adding more guns to the situation. It's like Correct. adding fuel to the fire. The issue is even tonight, this morning as I was coming here, I was watching something in the United States where a gunman has just killed around 28 people, actually, I think in a school situation. Right. So we also cannot say that guns are the solution. So there's a bigger underlying issue that the government That's must it. address in terms that, of... That underlying issue is right. a political issue. Politics. Right. And yeah, that yeah. politics, local politics. Solved, that yeah. local politics, that show of power. There's somebody there, and those people are talking there, I've, we have just watched some of them, I know them. They are politicians, they are people politicians. we know. Yeah. Some of them own choppers, they even transport those bodies from one area to another using their own uh, choppers. Mm. Some of them are in business. Cattle rustling is a big, big business, business in this country. Right. Some of the, uh, the, 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 the beef we consume in this city comes is because of this cattle rustling. So for people who facilitate this kind of banditry All and right. whatever is happening, are our leaders. Okay, and as Amos puts it, these leaders of ours are actually living here in Nairobi and perpetrating those kind of activities back in their regions. Right. They need to be ashamed of themselves. All right. Certainly, uh, that is a, a much bigger conversation to have. But anyway, after nearly four decades, candidates will begin uh, their rehearsals for KCPE tomorrow as well as Cape Sear. Uh, the candidates say uh, in primary schools will be marking the end of the 844 system as we knew it. And I want to just get a feel from my panelists really on how they feel about this. I did ask a couple of people on social media, be sampling some of those uh, views in terms of how they feel about, uh, you know, their last case literally the last the last bonds of the kcpe uh, learners will be having this uh, uh you know uh, examinations and of course this is uh, sort of well, before we set the perspective really historical perspective of how we got to the 844 system and how we move forward uh let me begin with you margaret um so the our last batch of KCP learners are sitting, and of course this is now a really big transition into uh, the new curriculum. What do you, how do you sort of feel about this? Yeah, it's, uh, it has been difficult to switch from 844 mm -hmm. to CBC, because there was, we were used to, do, to doing things in a, in, a certain, in a certain way. There's a way we would, uh, teach it's, it felt easier to mm -hmm. go in class and lecture mm -hmm. and allow the learners to, to do the exam you know cbc is telling us the teacher must facilitate and let the children do the work it it is like it's it's not easy letting go mm -hmm. the temptation to hang on is very high but somehow i strongly believe mm -hmm that the CBC is the way to go. Because this, if uh, there was a time I took a grade six and a grade seven then, last year, give them a problem to solve. I found that this CBC child is able to think critical and try to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. And like this other one who would go running, what do I do? So you have noticed the changes in there terms of even very how their change. thought process and how they are managing and handling, you know, uh, simple tasks as well as in school, yeah, right? They, they, they are more independent. They will ask more questions mm -hmm. and want to know. 
Right. I like the the, the eight four four ones are waiting for the next exam. Mm. They they are we they are they have been trained to just pass the exam. But the, when I look at the CBC child, mm -hmm. they want to go back to what they did and redo it. Mm -hmm. But once someone has done an exam in the eight four four system, they want the next exam and they cannot even remember. I was <laughs> now I love Swahili. There are children who get A's in Kiswahili. Mm -hmm. But after the exam, you go and ask them, they have no interest. Right. Uh, yeah. So that, that is where you notice the difference. And, and, and really, so you believe <coughs> this is suddenly... So it's bittersweet for you yes. to sort of hang on, but mm. at the end of it all, it is for the For best. the good of the child. Right. Or, or for the country also. Peter, your thoughts? The last KCPE, you've been a teacher for a yeah. long time. Many years. <laughs> 25 years. Now I'm just um, I don't like change. I'm a, I'm a conservative <laughs> and uh, or if change must be done, it must be done in a good way. You're a holder. I have different people like Amos here uh, people who like to do karubandika kind of things, you know, patch up here and move on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just about moving on. It's not just about making these children transit from one system to another. Mm -hmm. It is how you do it. It is a system. It's it's, it's getting it right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And the problem I'm having today mm -hmm. is that we are yet to get it right. Uh, even as the 844 uh, children, you know, Madam is speaking, Madam Kagas is speaking as a private school, mm -hmm. uh, a first of all, entrepreneur, maybe a director, maybe a head teacher from a private school. They seem to be more prepared. They, they can notice the change. As she puts it, she sees her children who are in the CPC system more inquisitive, more more you know more interested it's true mm -hmm. she, she's done she's been able to do that because she's sitting in most likely an air-conditioned classroom fewer students in her class <laughs> she's able to manage them mm -hmm. but i'm speaking from whom salaba who is there mm -hmm. whereby we have got 80 children crammed up in a in a small classroom with no desks right and with one teacher right at the front there teaching so many subjects 14 subjects in a in a day uh, uh, and and nothing really is going on. Mm. What we are happening is we are treating a disease. Kwame Nkrumah said, and uh, the problem we have in Africa is like we are a man who, who is late to catch a train. We want to catch the train. We are late. So because we are late, the train has already left the station and we are running after the train so that we can catch up and move on. Mm -hmm. And that is where we get it wrong. Mm -hmm. We are not keeping time, we are not able to get things right, we are not so sure of what we are doing, and as a researcher, I find it so embarrassing to say that we are moving on, we are, we are transiting from uh, 844 to, to CBC. Mm -hmm. It is happening maybe in private schools, it's happening in the minds of people like uh, Amos here, mm -hmm. but it's not happening in reality in most of the schools in this country. Mm -hmm. So the 844 system is not going away. The exams we were told that are going to, to, to be reduced, they are still there. Mm -hmm. The lecture method, Madam says that they are no longer using, that she's now doing, she's more of a facilitator than a teacher. That is in the minds of those in private schools. Mm -hmm. But in the schools where I learned and where I come from, teachers are still doing lecture method. Mm -hmm. Children are still sitting <coughs> under trees in the Northern Kenya and in, in the banditry areas. 844 kind of teaching and mm -hmm. kind of doing things may not be there on paper mm -hmm. but will continue to be there because we are yet to put up systems to facilitate the what, what is called competence-based curriculum but, uh, but i mean peter before i get to amos i mean this is what some would have described as uh the transition challenges from one system to the other which are sort of inevitable because at some point as you move on to you know even as you're moving from one house to another yeah. there are some things that you know the challenges that you face along the way the things you sort of need to leave behind yes. and, and all those things and we're talking about the issue of infrastructure and uh, you know lack of the teacher student yes. ratio as well at that point so these are things that perhaps in time would be able to as a country as a ministry as education ministry yes. would sort of be able to uh, streamline as well yes and again that's where well, again we are wrong because it's been already seven years now we're going to grade seven yeah of uh, grade cbc eight next year yeah. grade eight next year yeah so already we already eight eight years into this thing so we can't say so, teething challenges so we cannot talk about but there challenges. are transition we challenges planning. i am a high school teacher and i want to say this my high school friends are telling me 
These children are now supposed to be coming to senior school, what the CBC calls senior school. Mm -hmm. They have not seen anything, not syllabus, no book, no material, no, no training. They are just waiting for, you know, just like lamb ducks sitting somewhere <coughs> waiting to, to receive these children. Mm. The issue is not about that we, need, we should have already done this or we will do it. The issue is we never wanted to do it in the first place. Um, we seem to want, yes, we have an idea of where we want to go. Okay. But we don't really know how to go where we are going. All right. Uh, the exam has started mm -hmm. this year, as, the, as we have read here. We'll have the, the first, and the grade six will be doing the exam. The first one, yes? Yeah, I, I think it's the second this time, right? It's the, the second. second. This is the second, second one, right. Cohort. Then we also having KC, KCP, KCP, which is for one. grade eight, which is the last one, as you put right. it. Right. But uh, as, as, mad, as the madam from the private school is saying, the only difference will be is that some of them feel uh, that these ones in grade six hear that they are, they are going to junior secondary school, I think. Mm. But these ones are going to high school. These ones in, grade, uh, in KCP. Okay. Now, the difference is this. These ones who are going to high school feel much better, feel better equipped. Teachers who are teaching them feel they have done a better job. Teachers who are teaching uh, grade six don't even feel even feel prepared for this exam. They don't even know what's being tested. They don't even know what's being done, and that is why the difference is the ones who are on the other grade. The one we talk about uh, the the 844. Mm -hmm. They they seem to be well prepared. You can even look at the students. They look confident. You look at them. They feel they know where they are going. The ones from at class uh, grade six. They don't seem to, to know what's going to happen to them. Mm -hmm. All That's right. where the problem is. All right. And I must I'll get to you. Uh, I hear we have to take a, just a short break. When we come back, I'd like to get your thoughts on the same as well. Uh, the hashtag we're using this morning, AM Live and TV. Quite a short break. Stay with us. We're going to be back in a short while. What's your relationship with pain? What's your relationship with change? What is your relationship with finances? Do you get knocked out or do you go with the punches? Kitovu cha vizazi ni baba mzazi. Unafaa kuzingatia nini kabla hujalitia bula kondani. Join us for the third edition of Man Cave. Tuchambue, tutadavue nyama na mdahalo wake. Maswale wanaume, pe upe. And this time, we have an amazing, amazing after-party session from 7 p.m. till midnight. And we'll have great music, great food, and also fireside chats. And for you guys who want to spend the night over, well, definitely, we have the plan for you. Tarehe 28, mwezi October, mwaka ilfumbili, 23. Ungana nasi hapa, all all tepes, picnic side, kwa sherehe, bab kubwa. When men meet, change happens. You can now manage all your finances with one app. Link your bank cards and enjoy fast, safe and convenient transactions no matter the bank or mobile money network you're on. Released from pain. That moment when you start to get back to ordinary and ordinary feels amazing. Whatever pain you're going through, release starts here. Benefits of ordering with Glovo. Glovo allows you to order anything you want at the comfort and convenience of your home. Craving fried chicken, or pilau, or pizza? Easy and simple. Order on Glovo today. Glovo. Order anything we deliver in minutes. With Glovo, you've got the city at your fingertips. Una jisikia kukula kitu different? Order Glovo. Ama treat the family with a sweet surprise. Mmm! Download Glovo and get anything you want in minutes.
all holders are notified to report and surrender unclaimed financial assets to the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority, UFAA, on or before November 1st, 2023. Visit www.ufaa.go.ke and get started. All right, well, and welcome back to the program as we converse around the issue of, uh, you know, the 844 system and the fact that uh, for the last time, uh, the KCP, the last KCP cohort will be sitting for their national examinations from next week. And uh, Amos, 38 years down the line, all right? And now we are going to see this last batch of, you know, uh, KCP learners sit down for the examinations. There was always this scramble, you know, for top positions, top schools, which is the top teacher. That, that's all going to be phased out now. Now we're going to be entering into this, you know, a fully CBC system as even as we wind up with the KCC. Um, I don't know. I mean, your feelings about that? Yeah, it brought a very, very bad feeling to me because I'm also 38 years. So I hope that I'm also not going to go with the ACP. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the only thing that crossed my mind. But, but I think there was something very, very nostalgic about uh, 844, mm. um, especially the exams, uh, the KCPE. Um, how we, especially those of us who are in the village, is a time when you got some special diet. <laughs> uh, it was nice <laughs> waiting for the results to be announced, which school was number one. Some sort wait. of interesting excitement yes, yes, around yeah, that. Yeah. So, so the only issue I have is that I, I'll not have an opportunity to compare the experience with my daughter because mm -hmm. she'll not find it. Probably, I, I'm sure among us had a chance to, mm. to compare experiences <laughs> with his children and <laughs> same as Margaret, but not me. But anyway, it brought a lot of, um, a lot of excitement mm -hmm. and all that. But as everything else happens, um, the curtains must fall. Mm. So the first thing to do is to take this opportunity to wish our candidates all the best. Um, we know what it feels. Ex exams are usually a very, very nervous uh, period. The last exams I sat for on Kemu Tower's 12th floor, and it was not a very good feeling for those exams i passed and after that i said i'm not sitting again for exams mm. um but really want to encourage them that yes exams are just part of life even when you come out of school you still continue going through a lot of exams of course they are not scripted but they are the most difficult right the problem with those life exams is that you try to copy from people who have a different question so let's embrace the change that comes with it we can't go back however nostalgic it might be growing up in Chekalini going to swim in the rivers and <laughs> we leave cows to go and eat maize from the neighbor. Those times are gone and I embrace what is next. And I think that it helps me, it puts me into a question one of the, one of the leaders in education asked a, a few weeks ago. Um, we used to use KCP and KCSE as a measure of even telling what is a good school. Mm -hmm. So now with the exit of 844, Within Nairobi, you will see when results come out, people will be on vehicles, jumping, putting names all over. What is now going to be next? And I think that's a big conversation, sorry, to just try and engage in. And I really like what Margaret gave as an example. To begin asking ourselves that what do children really need? Mm -hmm. The measure of the seven competences that have been highlighted in the basic education curriculum framework, the huge conversation around values, and life skills that children now need when they step out because really the bans and banner is not something that you interact with every day but but, but there is something about how the teacher was presenting the content that <laughs> could live with you that right. becomes a life skill of what you picked from the school so right. really when you think of we used to call it the hidden curriculum but where I work, we are a little bit more explicit. We refer to it as the implied curriculum. Mm. There is something that the school is supposed to teach you. And that thing is centered around what is the vision statement of the school? What is the mission statement? What are the core values that you are supposed to pick from the school? And lastly, you then ask yourself what became the school motto. So one of the things that we make in, for instance, where I work, is to ask ourselves, that when you look at an, an adult and you define an adult as a functional person, what do you expect to see of a functional adult? Because not everyone becomes functional adults. Some of them become completely dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. and, and you think of a person as a multifaceted, I mean, as a multi-identity person. The Amos you're speaking to right now on air is very different from Amos the husband mm -hmm. last night. Who is very different from Amos the parent who is going to school 
after this. And then because Amunga has really attacked me <laughs> without any form of provocation, Amunga after this, I have declined the breakfast from NTV. <laughs> you are taking me down there at Java, you are going to buy me breakfast on your cost because you have attacked me and provoked me. But what I'm trying to put across is you also have an adult who is a friend, right. you have an adult who is a colleague, you have an adult who is a neighbor. Mm -hmm. So how do they function in these different spaces for them to be really balanced? And then finally, you're also talking about the person, somebody with their own fears, aspirations. And so these are now the critical components to begin looking at as a person. Then it doesn't matter whether you are an engineer, whether you are a doctor, mm -hmm. whether you are a journalist, whether you are a farmer, there are certain critical things that you need. And this is what the conversation around CBC ought to have been, should be, and should remain to be. Mm -hmm. It's not the question of how many learning areas. Of course, we have benchmarks of what is supposed to be done, but really the focus is around trying to get a functional adult. Mm -hmm. And I just want maybe to give one rebuttal to what Amunga is trying to say. Mm -hmm. That my brother, uh, it could be okay that CBC exists in my mind. Yes, CBC exists in my mind because I have a, I have a certain CBC that I have in my mind. I don't know whether that's the one that we are trying to do, but I have a sense of what Margaret was putting across that probably we seem to resonate that that is the direction that we ought to have gone. Mm -hmm. And I just want to remind people that let's not be very, very uh, rushed into, um, into blaming people who are innovators. The decision to go CBC was not made by the private schools. It was not made by the private schools. So I really don't understand why we will sit and begin bashing people who have basically taken a government position we are going to implement competence-based curriculum and they're trying to make the most out of it. And the only thing I can put across but is... But I think Abunga was sort of trying to compare the... Let me, let uh, me just finish. Let me just finish. Right. I got him very well. I got him very, very well. <laughs> this is what we need to appreciate. He'll clarify for himself. Yes, yes. Right. This, this, this is what I tend to feel. As mm -hmm. a country, we've lived in a state of hopelessness for so long mm -hmm. and we really look forward to us getting solutions from outside. And I just sit and ask myself, if you look at the frameworks of benchmarking and decisions that we make as a country here, there was China, there was India, there was what and what, and we talk about CBC has collapsed. But who has ever walked into even just a school, an average school in Kibra slums, in Madare, and found out what they are trying to do, mm -hmm. and build even just a relationship between this private school as well as the public school? Mm -hmm. I think that there is a conversation around complementarity that we have not adopted. So for as long as we keep on seeing each other as private versus public, private versus public, public versus private, mm -hmm. that's where we lose the conversation. There is a lot of innovation that Margaret and friends are doing, something that could also end up benefiting us. Mm -hmm. And the bigger conversation, just to wind up on this one, would be that I'm a strong believer, and I have said this several, that there exists nothing called a national system of education. Mm -hmm. It has never been there, Munga. And it's not going to be there. What we need to do is to support our schools to begin developing strong school systems that embraces the communities around it to begin to think around their own solutions. Right. And why I should say that, Zainab, I'll cite one example. Any meaningful education in this country is actually private, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Why should I say that? What government provides is tuition in paying teachers. But if you are to take the same resources that Eshibinga Secondary School is talking about, <laughs> And we take the same resources and tell Alliance to operate within the same resources. Alliance or Kakamega, government African school where Amunga taught for many years, mm -hmm. it will not operate. Mm -hmm. The reason as to why Kakamega and Alliance are able to operate is because they have a leeway to introduce certain innovations mm -hmm. that they still pass on the costs to mm -hmm. someone else. Mm -hmm. So when we make certain policy decisions, they could actually end up hurting the poor that we're actually intending to protect. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, for me, what Amunga, we really need to be so cautious. Because, like, if you say that children cannot come to school after this, before this time, what about the children attending boarding schools? And children attending boarding schools are not children from poor families. Mm -hmm. So there are so, different so, dynamics that yeah, Yes, there are so many different dynamics. And the that's different why levels. Amunga, yes. Even this NTV last time we argued with you and you, you are very hot on me. We've come back, the studio looks different, yes, isn't it? Yes. It's continuous process improvement. All so right. please don't, don't, don't beat Margaret. It doesn't really exist in my head. It actually right. exists in let's my head. Hear, let's hear from, uh, from Peter yes, then it's, Margaret. It's exactly. I, I can, I can get, you wanted to re get something? You want to no, yeah. I, I, I'm just happy mm -hmm. that they appreciate that the private school, you know, we have to exist and uh, we have to give the parents value for their money. And the parents are also, parents are not as uh, ignorant. As we they, think. They, we have designs which uh, took 
there was a word syllabus, so we have designed. Mm -hmm. So you read through the design and know this is what is expected. Mm -hmm. And for us to breathe, you know the ministry is so tough yeah. on private schools. Yeah. They threaten. So we have to really work and make sure we are working well with the ministry, what the ministry is expecting from us. So when we can't argue with them that we will comply, we will not, we just no. have to comply. Yeah. And for that reason, I, I was so happy some time the regional director of education came to a meeting in um, uh, Kenya private school and she said that they are very happy with the private schools, that we, uh, we embraced CBC with all that it came with. What they don't know is that if we don't follow that, they are harder on us than on their own the schools. schools. Yeah. yeah. So but we, then, mm -hmm. Hmm? You can finish, yes. Yeah, I, I, I was just trying to tell him that at the end of the day, it looks like we are really doing well. But you see, we are suffering, especially with the cost of living now. It makes us now to increase the school fees All right. for us to be comfortable. And Peter, you can join in. I mean, because from my understanding was the issue of the quality of education, I think, is what you, you are trying to put across sure. in terms of the learners who will have to face, for example, a learner in, you know, somewhere in yes. Turkana who doesn't have the necessary, you know, equipment and infrastructure that, you know, would be able to prov provide that quality education that for them true. as compared to someone here in Nairobi in an academy. Yes. In education, we learn something called equity. Mm -hmm. and equality. Mm -hmm. Equity is to make sure that, you know, we kind of try to equalize, to make education uh, to be equal, to, to make everyone equal. To, you know, you are studying the same thing, mm -hmm. you are understanding the syllabus, mm -hmm. the terms, term dates are the same, and all these things. You know, the government is supposed to kind of, kind of make ensure that there's some kind of equity in education. Mm -hmm. The problem that we have is that privateers, privateers, profiteers, People like the people sitting next to me, you know, they come up with issues like, you know, we want to, yes, they come up with better quality education. Mm -hmm. They try to meet the conditions that the government is giving them. But at the end of the day, you discover also is that they have the money. What about the schools that don't have the money? Government has more money than everyone else. What about the school? That. Let me just finish. What about a school in a place like where we have seen the bandit prone areas, whereby issues, it's not just about now money, it's about other geopolitics of that region the banditry the the uh, terror attacks mm -hmm. that are also affecting the quality of learning in those areas mm -hmm. so my issue is when you come up with policies about education mm -hmm. think about will it favor one sector of the population or will it be able to address all sectors of the population mm -hmm. cbc is a great idea we were not ready for it but as we go along as we go along and we are go doing exams, we are setting the exams this week, our prayer is that exams are supposed to serve three things. Exams are supposed to bring about tests and measurements. Mm -hmm. Test the children. Test your systems also as a country. Test and see what we have been doing for the last eight years and ten years in our, in our CBC. Are we doing the right thing? Then the next thing that an, an exam does is transition. An exam is supposed to transit a child from one place to the next place. Mm -hmm. Now, as we do these exams that we're going to do this this coming week, are we able to transit? Mm -hmm. Now, when the, the last government was on, and I think even this government has picked up with something called 100% transition, transition, that all children, whether you fail or you don't fail, you move to the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay, exams are supposed to have checked on that. And then finally, exams also uh, bring about what we call results or conclusions. When you have done an exam, we need to have, see the results coming out. Now, 844 and the other systems that we have had have been meeting these criteria that I'm talking about. We're able to see results. What you were saying a few minutes ago that he will miss the competition between schools, you know, that one school did better than the other school. The new way of doing things that we are being introduced to is such that there are no even results to be announced. The last time this exam called Kips, Kips, uh, Kipsaya. The, Kipsaya. 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 Kipsaya was done last year. Yeah. When the result was released, even nobody seemed to realize that the exam had been released. You know, the minister just released a, a note and said, you can go to your schools and check what you got. And isn't that the essence of really what exactly. is trying that is to... Not, that's where we go wrong. No. An exam. To, to move away from this, you know, exam-oriented yeah, sort of strategy to... Yes. You know. yeah. That thing has been 
misused. You know, it is people being sent to media like my friend Amos to come and say that exams no, are I'm, bad. I'm, Amunga is wrong for you to imagine that we are being sent. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Let me just tell him this rebuttal. Excuse me. Yes. Many Kenyans go to test for HIV. Yes. Then and they did a result. Let, let, me, let me finish. Yes. When you get your results, that's your business. What have I got to do in terms of what I got <laughs> with my KPC results for you to know? Okay. Examination. I mean, it is and your business with the way I, with the way I tested you. Why are we trying to create a big fuss about it? Amunga, excuse me. We yes. also have got our own brains. And we yes, do not I operate under the whims of anyone. <laughs> right. You don't see me coming here to operate in the name of so and so. So, okay. and so stop. Not, not everyone Amunga. is a politician. It's not an exam. Okay. Yeah. It's yes. not an exam. So it's just to imagine. Oh, that is all right. I've so we have a studio. But what I'm trying to say is this. Okay, nobody has said anyone. But what I'm trying to say is this. He has retracted that. I've retracted the statement. I withdrew. What I'm trying to say is this, Amos. That the problem is not just just the, the the testing is not about it's not a bad thing we cannot every time uh, make that exam look de devilish that you know it's bad to have exams exams are everything but at the end of it all i mean exams are not the it's just a small fraction of really what then it's what gives us the feedback about. it's what gives us the feedback of what all we have right. been doing it's what gives us the transition okay so you see cbc is trying to say that we don't need to do really many exams. No, that there will be no exam. That, that, that's, that's not, not even so true. Serious. CBC that, itself has has more exams than even. KCP. And that is why. That so, is, so I, 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 I don't know what he's speaking for because mm -hmm. on one hand he seems to be saying that exams are necessary. Again, he's trying to defeat the same. Because you see that you're being told that whatever you did right from grade one is going to account for your final score. Mm -hmm. KCP was only going to test you for three days. Mm -hmm. KCSE was going to test you for the 21 days. Okay. So so I wonder when we talk about it is a fact that exams exams are part and parcel of life all right there can be no system of education mm -hmm. without without assessments That's but true. i totally personally i totally agree with the fact that we should not begin nationalizing this kind of noise we hear about exams it is about whoever is testing you is about your competences what do i have got to know about what my neighbor's child has got all right how does it help me in terms of knowing what amunga's child got or zainab got in, in in her school what i want to know is you are the journalist there are you going to ask me the question mm -hmm. that's nice. why do i want to know whether you got a c plus or whether you got a b minus mm -hmm. what do you want to know so that that's where at least we we, we realize there's a bit of a, a perhaps different perspectives in terms of uh uh, the implementation of this new CBC as opposed to uh, the uh, past curriculum. I'm to but, think, sorry, just a minute. But very quickly, so that we can. Yeah, I wanted to get quickly. your thoughts I'm on this particular about, matter. You know, the, the issue is not that um, ex it's wrong actually for exams to categorize people. You know, make say this one's got C, so they should go here. Mm -hmm. This one got a D, so you should not get this kind of job. It's wrong for that kind of thing to happen. That was not right. How okay. do they do placement but, then? Yeah. Now, the problem is that making place, using exams to place people, to yeah. place them in schools, to place them in job categories, to place them in various areas of life, that is where the problem is. And I listened to Belio Kipsang a few days ago addressing uh, exam managers. He said, where we got it wrong as a country is using exams to place okay. students and learners. Exams are just supposed to be a transition to the next level. An exam is supposed to test our systems of what we have been doing so far. It's not about to place you and to label you. The issue that has been wrong in our exams all along has been that exams are labeling us. That this one failed, so it's a failure. This one passed, so it's a successful person. All right. Exams should not be able to should not be used to do that. Okay, and, and touching on that exams as we make our final remarks as well because of time as well. I begin with you, Margaret. So this is, uh, I think I touched on this a little bit on the uh, last page of the Daily Nation. Uh, it's the issue of uh, early exposure to examination materials, which has been uh, quite a thorny issue uh, for NEC especially, I believe, and, and, and teachers as well as uh, parents who've really raised concerns on the same as well. Uh, members of Parliament telling uh, education CS uh, Zekel Mashogu to, show, uh, to ensure that ex credibility of the exams is at uh, the priority uh, by sealing all loopholes at a glance. What are some of those proposals uh, to tame cheating? Increase markers pays uh, per exam, uh, pay examiners on time, pay the security officers on time, increase the number of marking centers, reduce distance learners cover to reach examination centers, release capitation on time. Two batches of exam released at once, not picked twice, and uh, the DCI and CA to raise red flags and uh, probe any cases of exam cheating. But really, this has been quite a sore area for 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 the education system. It is very unfortunate 
because these things are done by adults, they're mm -hmm. not done by children. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is any child who goes looking for leakage. Mm -hmm. It is the adults around the children who look for this exam and give these children. But it is also, you might find learners who are actually looking for few. material, right? Few. Very few. Mm -hmm. You know, these children are learning from what is uh, uh, happening around them. No, when you look at a child, if you come to my house and my child uh, insults you, actually it is me who normally insults you. They are just repeating that which I normally do. Mm -hmm. It is very bad for any adult to expose uh, a child to exams knowing very well that it is wrong. Because this child will never learn, to be honest. Even as they go on, they never want to work hard. And they are denying somebody else. I, you know, I heard Peter saying there is no way you can use uh, exams to test or to place. You see, if I'm a scientist and you assi assess me, you will notice that I can answer okay. science questions well. All right. Now, if you, a child who doesn't know science, let me say, should end up being a, a nurse, a doctor, and they don't have the, what it takes to become a doctor. That means at the end of the day, we are going to have wrong people in the hospitals. So I strongly believe that the people managing the exam mm -hmm. must just be honest so that we come up with a society or a people <laughs> that <laughs> mm, will also treat us well. So you're appealing to the honesty at the very core of the people, it right? It is everybody okay. handling the exam. All right. Because sometimes an exam could come, like, uh, you know, when uh, this year's... Mm -hmm. uh, Macho, uh, no, the, the, just uh, Magoha. Before, before Magoha. Matiang. Matiang. Yes. You know, it was so thorough mm -hmm. that it was not easy. All right. The exam was being handled by security, the invigilator. The, but before, people would go and pick the exam from police stations, mm -hmm. come. It was not even a neck problem. So we need to sort of tighten regulations, as you say. Yeah. All right. And the people handling, it might not be from neck. Okay. It is from the, the container to the school. Okay. In between, that's where the problem is. All right. Yeah. Uh, and Amos also, just in one minute, uh, and I know I'm apologies for the timing, but yes, in just a minute perhaps, uh, exam irregularity is a major issue. Uh, concerns that have been raised, um, some of these proposals, do you think this is going to help? Yes, they, they, they will help because the integrity of national exams must be protected at all costs. Yeah. I, I am one person I appeared before the parliamentary committee and mm -hmm. I've called those who steal exams and those who aid mm -hmm. uh, examination cheating should be labeled as terrorists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these are actually economic crimes mm -hmm. and crimes against humanity. Mm -hmm. They should never be tolerated and mm -hmm. there is no excuse whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I know that NEC is doing a lot in terms of also improving its own systems including mm -hmm. um, what we think around how exams should be done. It reminds me of a conversation I was facilitating last evening mm -hmm. with the multi-stakeholders on an initiative we are calling the project and one of the ideas that came up is a project that uh, management university of africa is participating in called the one million ethical ethical leaders and one of the initiatives that the university has taken and which some of the schools that we are working with have also embraced is we want to reach a level where children can sit for exams without being invigilated mm -hmm. that is the highest level of ethics mm -hmm. that is the highest level of demonstrating kindness i think that we shouldn't really put government in this situation whereby we are hiring everything has to stop simply because of national exams mm -hmm. i think exams are a very very simple issue the same way you just go to test for malaria without without anyone going to invigilate you <laughs> <laughs> Malaria, mauna. Uh -huh. That's how it is supposed to be. But these mm -hmm. shenanigans that we are creating so that we use it as a measure of telling how good or how bad a government is, I think it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. I agree right. with Margaret. Let's really go and fix our value issues that we have. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a problem in the school, it's a problem that we have everywhere, whether it's on the streets, whether it's in the churches, whether it's in the mosques, yeah, whether it's in the issue, families, is a national issue. They okay. really fix the value issues. You really have got no excuse whatsoever to aid 12 year olds 13 year olds to steal exams that's bad manners and if you do that right. shame on you should be arrested and should even be shot in public if, <laughs> if justice had not appealed the oh wow i must say that was uh, quite uh, intense <laughs> <laughs> but not any, else. All right, yes. Uh, yes and uh, me, what I can talk about is Peter. the welfare of the teacher. Okay. Um, at uh, Kenya Women's Teachers Association, we are talking about ensure that the people who are handling exams are also well paid 
and paid on time. Mm -hmm. We have a big issue with our examiners. They are not being paid on time. So you think the, that's one of the major that issues, That was a right? big reason that, and I think that's why they, we can see it's now among the issues that are being highlighted here. That just ensure that they are sleeping in good conditions because yeah. we are having issues whereby examiners who are examining these exams and marking them sleep in very horrible conditions. Yeah. Surely Kenya National Examinations Council, you can improve on how you handle our teachers who are handling exams mm -hmm. to take care of them so that they also take good care of our exams exactly. and of our children they are doing a very noble duty mm -hmm. they are doing a very important duty for this country mm -hmm. just the way we saw people who are writing the constitution sleeping in five-star hotels mm -hmm. in mombasa mm -hmm. and uh, doing their thing at bombers mm -hmm. when will you also see teachers being taken to places like bombers mm -hmm. white sands hotel and any other hotel in this country to mark exams why should you keep them in horrible conditions right. we want to tell you kenya national examinations council shame on you that you have been mishandling our teachers right. this just a small disclaimer i think we have to go on record okay. please let's give the right information kenya national examination council does not hold money uh -huh. so who is in charge this of is a blame that is supposed to go to treasury all right NEC can only pay what it has received from treasury because it's a government decision to make sure that it is paying for examination fees it is not a decision made by NEC. when NEC was actually collecting money from parents it even used to have surplus so mm -hmm. please Let's take this advocacy where it rightfully belongs. <laughs> Professor Yoguna Ndungu, if you really help NEC by giving it a little bit more money... But NEC so is the authority that is in charge of the teachers. Yes, yeah, but it doesn't collect money. Right. You can only give it's, what you it's have. It's supposed to get their budget, supposed to get their act right, supposed okay. to have their money on time. They have done what they are supposed to do. All so right. take the lobbying where it is supposed to be. <laughs> treasury as well as the ministry, but mostly around Treasury. They are All the right. ones who release money. Thank you, Amos Kaburu, Chief Consul, Opticum, Peter Munga, Education Researcher, Kenya uh, Women Teachers Association as well as a teacher. And Margaret Kagasi, head teacher at Marikani Primary School and member of the Kenya Private uh, Schools Association. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming in this morning and for making time for us to have this conversation as we uh, look ahead, you know, the rehearsals tomorrow and then uh, the national examinations uh, from next week. That is for KCPE and uh, KEPSEA as well. Of course, uh, 1.4 learners have registered for this year's KCP. I believe that's the highest number in the country's history of the exam and you also have about 1.2 million grade 6 learners who are also expected to sit for their CAPSEA exams uh, from Monday next week all right so we'll be following up on that as well thank you though for joining us this morning and having this conversation let's continue talking online the hashtag is MLiveNTV my name is Zenebi Smile good morning